Okay, in this video, I want to show off a new tool that we have for UCS. And this is called UCS Renamer. And I'm going to call the program to the foreground, just like this. And this is what it looks like. Let me give you a little explanation of what the program does. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you to Andrew Moore, who, uh, along with Justin Webster down at Cargo Cult, uh, wrote, who wrote Matchbox. If you haven't seen it, it's an amazing program for doing conforming. Anyway, Andrew donated his time to create this tool for us, and uh, super thankful uh, for that time. It's a relatively simple app to use. Doesn't mean it was simple for him to code, but um, here's why this app exists. Uh, when we came up with UCS, we came up with a sort of structured file name, and quite a few people, um, you know, didn't think that was the greatest idea or didn't love the file name structure. But um, I think we convinced a lot of people why we have that structure and um, but what I realized was it would be great if uh, vendors and users had a way to easily swap out file names for other file names. Now, there are other ways you can do this. Certainly, you could do this in SoundMiner, maybe in Basehead and Soundly, I'm not sure. But um, but let's say you weren't using one of those programs and you wanted to basically swap out one set of file names for another set. For example, let's say you're a vendor and you released a lot of libraries over the years and now you want to give to your users um, the option of using a UCS file name or some other file name. Maybe you just changed the structure of your file name and you wanted to send out a new metadata spreadsheet and you wanted them to be able to change their file name. Well, that's exactly what UCS Renamer is meant to do. And let me just give you a little demo of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, drop some files onto the program. So I have here my library called Ether. And I'm going to just drag it over and drop it in the left-hand pane. And you'll see um, this is a list of all the files, of 120 of them, I think, in this library. And they're all sort of grayed out at the moment, um, but they're loaded and kind of ready to work with. Now, I'm going to switch over to numbers for a second and show you that what I have here, I'm going to start with this one, is a CSV spreadsheet. So this is just a, a, an export of all the metadata from SoundMiner. But you'll see over here on the left-hand side, I have the first column says file name. And these are all the file names as they were when I released this library or as they are right now. And if you start to scroll across, what you see is there are some other fields in here, the bunch, bunch of metadata, and there's something here called original file name. Now that's empty because this is the original file name. But you see here I have a column called alt file name. And this is basically an alternate file name that I want to maybe supply to the users of this library in case they really hate this, which is the UCS name by default. Maybe they want to use this file name. And I have a UCS file name column, it's empty as well. But if I keep scrolling across, eventually here we'll come to another category that says alt file name 2. It's way over here. And we have a lot of other metadata in here, which is not really applicable to this program, but bit depth sample rate. And this is a full export of all the metadata. The program will ignore all of this. But what the program will do is look in all of these column headers for anything that has the name file name in it, the word file name, or file space name. I think it looks for either way, all, one, all together or split out. And if we keep going across, we should see uh, over here somewhere, show file name probably exists. And again, it's not being used. But the program, when I drop this CSV on it, is going to basically tr assume or hope that the original file names here are in the first column. So let me show you what happens when I drop this CSV on this one called match. As soon as I do, you're going to see that all the files light up on both sides. These are the files over here. And this is the column file name from that CSV. And it found a match all the way across. So if I scroll down, you can see that it matched every one of those files to that column in the file name. Now I'm going to turn down the folder over here of the actual file so you can see what we can do next. Now if I come down here to this area down at the bottom, I can click this and I can see every other column in that CSV that had the word file name in it. Now we know original file name didn't have anything, so nothing happens when I choose that. It's just empty. But the alt file name, if I click it, it's basically going to offer to change all of these file names to these alternative file names. And again, it's matched them across in the CSV, so it knows which file to assign the name to. And if I scroll down, you can see that all of these files are still in white, which means there's a new file name available. And if I click Preview, the file names over the left change. This is what they're going to be renamed to if I click Rename. And watch over here, this list of the file names. When I click Rename, almost instantaneously, all of those files have now been renamed to that new uh, entry in the spreadsheet. Now I can also undo it immediately if I decided I wanted to change my mind. And let's say I want to use the alt file name 2 instead. This one is laid out a little bit different. This has the category name first, then the name of the library at the end. Again, this is just a different structure that I might want to offer up to my users. And again, if I preview it and rename it, 
there you go. All of those files have been renamed on the Finder level. Now, this program is Mac only at the moment. It might be possible for us to port it out to um, to Windows in the future. I'm not positive of that. Andrew's going to look into that when he has time. But for now, it's only Mac only. Now, what happens if you... I'm going to undo this real quick so we have our original names back. I'm actually going to come over here and hit Clear Data because I want to start over. Now, what happens if the CSV you're working with doesn't have a uh, file name as the very first column that matches the files? Well, let me just drag this library back on here. And let me switch back over here to numbers for a second and show you how another spreadsheet here. And over here, file name is not in the list on the left. I have original file name, then alt file name, UCS file name. And you see that I have to scroll way over here to find the actual file name, right? Well, the program is smart enough to realize um, that if it doesn't match on the first column, it's always going to start on the first column that has the word file name in it that maybe file name is in a different location and it will keep trying to sort of go through the categories or the columns in order until it finds the match. So let me show you what that would look like. So in this case, I'm going to drop this one on that I know that file name is there in the spreadsheet, but it's not the first column. And when I drop it on, I get a message immediately that says, um, you know, none of these files were matched in this column called original file name. That's the first column in that CSV. So it said click OK to search the next applicable field. So I click it. And it jumps over here, but it says the same thing. No match in alt file name either. Like, it doesn't match. But if I click OK again, UCS file name we know is empty. But the fourth one, the fourth column that it looked across was called file name, and it did figure out that there was a match at that point. And now I can do the same thing. I could come down here and I could choose either of the alt file names or any other file names that I might have. Again, these are all empty for these categories, but alt file name 1 and 2 do have these alternate file names. I can click Preview and... Again, just like this, I can hit rename, and there they go. They've all changed, right? Um, so that's it. That's sort of what the program does. And if I hit undo now, it sort of starts back over, and it starts searching from the columns on the left again over in the CSV. So I have to click OK a few times eventually, and it finds the match again. So that's UCS Renamer. Um, again, the idea here is that uh, any vendor could send out a metadata spreadsheet with just a new set of file names. Assuming that the users hadn't changed the file names, they didn't have the original file names, they'd be able to sort of swap out a whole set of file names for a different set. The main thinking here is that a vendor that supplied file names before and wants to supply an optional UCS file name to their users could do that with a simple spreadsheet of just two columns, the original file names as they were and the UCS file names you know, as a new one. But you could also, again, supply as many alternate file names as you wanted with different structures and different readability and things like that. And that's what this app does. This app is uh, available on the uh, UCS Google Drive. Or I should say it will be up there very soon. Um, I'm going to post it up there around the same time that I post the 8.1 update to the list, which I hope to do within the next week or so. It's you know mid-January now, so very soon. Um, again, it's Mac only, but it's free to use. Um, if you bundle it, you know, or if you point users to it, please give credit to Andrew, Andrew Moore, who, who wrote it. Um, and that's it. So I hope that this will prove useful for uh, vendors and users for uh, swapping in and out file names.